This is, I'm going to show you some images, some movies. This is a cell. Okay, so we can see the cell here. This is the nucleus. And these are the chromosomes. And this cell is dividing. So we're watching this cell divide. This is with bright field microscopy. We're just looking at the whole cell. We're not looking at particular molecules. And we're just watching the cell divide. And you can see now the cell, the chromosomes are aligning. And they're going to start to separate. And we're going to get two cells. There they go. Okay. There they go. They're moving to, 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 to separate poles, and the cells are now separating. And we've gone from one cell to two cells. So we can see that. We can see that without any special, just with a regular microscope. I imagine that even back in the 1600s, if they were looking very carefully, I'm not sure it has as nice an image, but they could probably see cells that were dividing. We can also see. Cells moving. Taken from the so this is a neutrophil. Okay. Neutrophils are cells in the immune system. Neutrophils, you can read up here. Okay, they're in the bloodstream, they're recruited to sites of inflammation, to sites of infection, and they are very good at uh, migrating towards a particular uh, stimuli. I think it's funny. And some of those stimuli include this thing called FMLP. It's a Free amino acid peptide is secreted. And this is a micropipette, right over here. It's a micropipette. And this micropipette is just giving you a little bit of one of these uh, chemical signals. And as you can see, oh, the neutrophil is following the signal, it's responding to the signal and migrating. And it's protruding this. What was that structure we call a pseudopod? Uh, I'm going to show you later. Uh, that's called a, 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 a protrusion that is, that's, that's driven by the actin cytoskeleton that drives the cell to migrate in the direction of the, the stimulus. And you can see here another movie where now the stimulus is a real bacteria. That's a bacteria, a little black thing. The bacteria and the neutrophil is chasing after it <laughs> and it wants to eat it and it's going to get it. Actually, it's going to get it. The bacteria did a good job of staying away. Right there. Oops. And he's getting there. Oh, there he goes. Okay. And that's what so the, the neutrophil is going around. That's 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 the defense mechanism of the of the of, of, of the of the immune system against the bacteria. And it's, it's based on cell migration. And we can see very nicely in the microscope that we can see the cells move. What we can't see in those images, like Kang said before, but we can't see particular protein, we can't see particular antigens, we can't see particular DNA. So what we want, what we've done, what, and what the, the real advantage and the real benefit of fluorescence microscopy has been that we've been able to use these dyes that Kang has said and attach them to antibodies, use these antibodies. Antibodies are generated by our immune system again, and they're raised against specific proteins, specific antigens, and we can take antibodies and we can localize them to particular uh, regions of the cell. So we can take an antibody against, uh, I guess, the, the cytoskeleton, and we can localize it. Well, I'm going to show you some images of that. And we have lots of antibodies, and we have lots of fluorophores. And so we can do a lot of different things. Okay? And so here are the different fluorophores. And this is just one list. And there, there, are, there are thousands of different fluorophores. There are many dyes that we can use, fluorescent dyes, that we can use with particular microscopes to image particular proteins. And, and, and attach to antibodies uh, that we can use. And this is just all these different, just like Kang was showing you blue and green, but we have a whole spectrum. And we can, in a microscope, they sell microscopes with all these different sets of filters that will allow us to image and separate the signals from these different fluorophores. So we can image lots of different fluorophores depending on the microscope that we purchase. And so what we can also do is we can take, use, this is really, a, a, the Nobel Prize was given for the discovery of this protein, this protein called green fluorescent protein that comes from this jellyfish. Jellyfish are fluorescent, they're in the sea, they fluoresce, shine light on them and they, they give off light. And this is the protein, this green fluorescent protein, absorbs light just like Kang showed you, absorbs blue light, it emits green light. Well, what's special about this is we can take this protein and we can engineer using the common DNA technology uh, a, a protein in which this protein is stuck 
on another protein, and we can put that back into the cell, and now we can watch not putting an antibody on the cell, we can watch the behavior of that particular protein, because that protein is giving off light because it's got this viral light GFP stuff on it. And again, these are all different GF, they're not, G, they're not GF, these are not green fluorescent proteins. They're fluorescent proteins of all different colors, from blue, one's called cherry. They've engineered, again, using lots of technology, recombinant DNA technology, different fluorescent proteins that emit light at different wavelengths. So we can image more than one color in one cell. So we have lots of technology to go in and now look at proteins and look at specific proteins and how they behave using fluorescence microscopy and fluorescence technology. So here, these are chromosomes, okay? I showed, we saw the chromosomes in the dividing cell. Now we're seeing the chromosomes and they're fluorescent. This is the DNA. And we can see at the end of the, of the chromosomes, telomeres. And telomeres are these particular ends of DNA that gradually as we age, they get shorter and shorter. And this is the cytoskeleton. So here is a cell. Again, this is a cell, okay? This is the nucleus in blue. This uh, is in yellow are the microtubules, one type of, type of cytoskeletal element, and, 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 and blue is active. And if you remember those protrusions that I showed you, they were driven by active polymerization. So active was driving the formation of these protrusions. And we can use particular proteins and antibodies, and particular dyes, to image these three different structures in one cell. And this is the, the scaffold of the cell. This is a three-dimensional reconstruction of the endoplasmic reticulum, and the endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle. So in the cell, there's many organelles. There's the nucleus, there's the endoplasmic reticulum. There's also the mitochondria, which are here in green. And in the, the endoplasmic reticulum is where proteins are made. It's the center of the factory of the cell, where everything is generated and made. And mitochondria is essentially where all the energy is generated by the cell. Okay? Mitochondria produce all the energy that the cell needs to make it to make uh, to make the actin polymerize, to make all, all the, st the structures in the cell to move around. The energy is generated in pretty large part by mitochondria. And so this is good. And if I go back, sorry, to this image, we can just take a look. I didn't show you the scale bars, but here this is five microns. This distance is five microns. So this distance here is probably about one micron. If we go down to this really skinny guy, maybe we're getting to about a couple hundred microns. So we're getting a couple hundred nanometers, I'm sorry. A couple hundred nanometers, okay? So we're doing pretty good, but that's as far as we can go. We can't get any further than that. And, and I work, my work works on the, the sites where these guys come into contact with one another. And these sites are only 50 nanometers apart. So we need to have techniques that can really allow us to visualize these things that are smaller than 200 nanometers because they, there's a lot of biological activity and important biological events that occur below this 200 nanometer uh, diffraction barrier. Okay, so we've got this diffraction barrier that can be explained. And the reality is that a lot of stuff, so we can go down, I guess we're down here to 200 nanometers, but the problem is we, we really can't see with optical microscopy anything below this limit. And so the question is how do we look, how do we look as biologists at, 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 at the, the, the material in the cell that's smaller than that size. And so one way, and it was, was a real uh, real revolution, I would say that the, the, the revolution in terms of cell biology, and I would say that cell biology started with the discovery and the application of the electron microscope to the analysis of biological samples. And I put this here because this guy is Keith Porter, and Keith Porter has been, for a cell biologist, he's really famous, he was one of the, the pioneer cell biologists who, who applied you can see here, in, I think it's 1945, 1944, this publication, okay? And he applied electron microscopy to the study of cells, and he was a Canadian who was born in Halifax. He wanted to do his work at Rockefeller in New York, but he was a Canadian, and he was really one of the pioneering uh, cell biologists uh, of, of his day. And this is his image, and here, if I show you carefully, this is a mitochondria, okay? And here, this is the endoplasmic particular all this lace light structure. And they discovered, this endoplasmic reticulum was discovered uh, by electron microscopy by Keith Porter and some of his colleagues. And so here's, a, here's another image. And I should uh, point out that, the, that the, every now and then I throw this, this website on the, oh, somewhere uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna show it again. There's a website at the American Society for Cell Biology. They have a cell images section. And anybody who wants to go and see images of the cell, this is where I take a lot of my images, and there's images of everything in the cell. And you can just go into the site, it's, it's a free site, and you can find uh, uh, 
images of pretty much every aspect of cell biology. And so here is a modern electron microscope image. And again, there is the ER. Okay? Here are mitochondria. Okay? And you can see that now instead of seeing a red blob or a red tubule or a green blob, uh, we're seeing lots of structure and detail. We can see that the mitochondria have two distinct membranes. We can see on these right, on the on this ER, the little knobs here, those little bumps are ribosomes. And ribosomes is where the proteins are made. This is I guess again going back to high school, but proteins are made from RNA. RNA is made from the DNA, makes RNA, RNA makes protein. The RNA is bound to these little dots here, these ribosomes, and that RNA is translated to make a protein that is, is secreted into the ER and then taken out of the cell to go to where it needs to do its job. Okay? And so here we can see a really beautiful image here. And here if you take a look at this scale bar, this is one micron. And look at the resolution we're getting. So we're down. You can, you can apparently, I'm not sure in real biological images, you get down to two nanometers, but you can come awfully close. So we have nanometer, nanoscale resolution by electron microscopy. And this is great. And we've learned enormous things from electron microscopy in terms of how the cell, how we, we had to how the cells form. And so here is another, and now I just want to, I mentioned the, the endoplasm particulum. This is uh, a little French immersion class, okay, but we can just. It, it is a cafe scientifique, okay? And so here we have, uh, this is the endoplasmic reticulum, another EN image, and here you can see again the ribosome, and this is where the proteins are made. The proteins are then taken to this structure called the Golgi apparatus. And this structure is where the proteins are processed, and then they're taken off to their destination. Essentially the, 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 the bus station of the cell is making sure that every protein goes to where it's supposed to go. And this is sort of the traffic hub of the cell. And so what we have here is a protein, it's fluorescent, it's tagged with GFP. This is a particular protein that now is in the ER. And all this stuff out here is in the ER. And as I start the movie, you're going to see it's going to go to this Golgi apparatus that's really next to the cell. And so the protein is going to VSV. This is a VSV protein. It's GFP tagged. It's going to the Golgi. And then it's going to go... And then it's going to go to where it's supposed to go, which is the plasma membrane. And so you can see that the protein is now concentrating in the structure. That's the Golgi apparatus, okay? And then it's going to the plasma membrane. And you can really see that by EM, we can see a lot more detail of the Golgi apparatus than we can by fluorescence microscopy. Okay, so fluorescence microscopy, we're limited. We're very much limited in terms of how the detail of the structure that we can see. And, and, but the problem is, that electron microscopy, we can't do. We can't image live events. We can't image over time. We can only look at samples that are fixed. Fixed means fixed, they're fixed in time. So we can get a snapshot of the cell. We can't really look at anything, any live, live events or any, any actual movement. And there's a lot of movement going on in the cell. Okay? And this is just a couple of movies to show you that these are vesicles in the Golgi. And these are vesicles that are coming in tubules. We call them vesicles, these little spots, okay? They're carrying the membrane-bound structures that are carrying stuff, and they're taking stuff to the Golgi apparatus, they're taking stuff away, and these events are happening all throughout the cell, okay? And so it's not just in the Golgi, but through all the different organelles in the cell, we have lots of dynamic events that are going on. And so this uh, is, a, is, a, is a, a reconstruction. It's a 3D reconstruction of electron microscopy. And what you can do with electron microscopy is now you can go, and it's really, really beautiful, you can make what we call EM tomograms, and so you can get a 3D reconstruction of uh, structures in the cell. And, you, and so what they've done is they've pseudo-colored different structures with different colors so that we can actually see how the cell actually, uh, how, 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 this is the Golgi apparatus, and so we can see, if you recall, there were all these different cisternia that I showed you previously, and these are all different colors. And now I'm going to go, and this is, this is the Golgi apparatus of an insulin secreting cell. So this is a pancreatic cell that secretes insulin, insulin and, and in response to, 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 to eating and to food that, that, that allows us to absorb uh, our nutrients. Okay. And so here is the, the Golgi, and it's turning around for us. Okay, and you can see the different structures. And now they're going to add in, I think the insulin granules come first. And they're going to be in blue. And so we have insulin granules all over the cell. They're coming in blue. Uh, and then we're going to have these vesicles, the ones I showed you, that we're moving around. 
they're going to come in white. And we're going to say there's a lot of these vesicles. Okay, so by 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 fluorescence, all these vesicles. So all these vesicles, they're there, but remember, they're moving. Okay, these are just as a snapshot of time, and these guys are moving in and out, and they're moving really rapidly. And then we're going to come and see the endoplasmic reticulum in yellow. Okay, so there's the ER in yellow, and this in green are the mitochondria. And so take a look at that, and you realize that, 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 that the cell is very crowded. Okay? <laughs> it's very crowded, right? And, 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 and all, all this stuff is moving around, okay? It's exchanging, ER is going to gold, the gold is going to ER, mitochondria is inter everything's moving, okay? And yet, it's very crowded. So everything's going, so at this point, so, so we, we can't, at this point, now we get a beautiful image, we can look at everything. We're not able at this point to really go and say, let's look at everything moving in the cell. However, if we were, I imagine it would look something like this. And this is from the fifth, I can maybe put some music here. This is from a movie, The Fifth Element, okay? And it's a, a taxi scene in the future in New York where taxis can fly. And so I can really imagine that this is probably what's going on in this cell. So there, that's the cell, okay? There are the vesicles. And they're moving around, okay? Here, look at the better resolution that we get here. And so, I'll leave. I think we're done. Perhaps. 